Hey, how you guys doing? Uh, my name is Ron Purvis. I'm with the Kentucky Fried Gamers. Uh, a lot of you may know me as uh, Bubba Hotep, my handle on all the forums. Um, what I'm going to be doing here today is I'm going to be demonstrating uh, beginning cardstock modeling. Uh, I'm going to be using the beginner's guide from the Fat Dragon Games. Uh, I'm going to build a regular 4-inch uh, wall section and a broken 4-inch wall section. Uh, the regular one is in the beginner's guide. It's the one they show how to build in that. Uh, the Beginner's Guide can be found on the uh, Fat Dragon Games website, which I will put a link uh, at, or a listed at the end of the uh, video. So, uh, without any further ado, uh, let's get going and uh, I'm going to show you what you need to get started. Alright, tools you need to do the cardstock modeling. Um, first off, you're going to need a cutting mat. Uh, you can get them at uh, any of the craft stores or hobby stores. Uh, I think I actually bought mine at a hobby town. Um, I know people that use the ones that you can uh, uh, cut material on that you get from places like Joann's or Michael's or different places like that. Um, you also need a, uh, a metal ruler. Um, you can get these same place or any of the uh, like uh, dollar stores or whatever a lot of times will carry them. Um, you can use scissors or any variety of knives. You can just use the uh, regular little blade, break off blade knives, uh, an X-Acto or razor knife. Uh, X-Acto also makes a uh, type of knife with a guide on it where you can keep square if you're cutting uh, foam core and stuff with it. Um, you'll also need a, uh, a marker color dependent uh, upon what uh, you're building. Um, what I would suggest to do is get a piece of scrap cardstock and mark uh, with the different markers on it and then hold it over next to what you're using uh, to uh, get the closest color match. Um, I bought a set of uh, these from I think it was Big Lots or something for like five or six bucks for like a hundred colors. So that's that's what I use. Uh, you can use the more expensive Prismacolor or you know any various name brand or whatever. Um, I also keep a pencil handy in case I need to mark something. Um, I also keep a little uh, little wooden sticks uh, handy. To, they're good to reach up inside the wall and push down um, if your ruler's too big for that, which mine is. Um, I also like to keep handy uh, a napkin or a paper towel or something to wipe excess glue off with. Um, and more importantly, you'll need glue. Um, I use a couple of different kinds of glue. Um, the one I used to use is the uh, zip dry paper glue, which I bought at uh, one of the local craft shops um, and I just started using this um, Tom had suggested this it's scotch quick dry adhesive um, it's super super cool uh, I like it it's what I'm going to be using uh, in this build here alright here's the uh, basic four inch wall that we're going to start with um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to cut and score this scoring uh, you'll see he'll have dashed lines on here. Scoring, what you simply need to do on your scoring is line your ruler up with your score and lightly drag the knife across it. This will help you uh, in bending the wall so that they'll be perfectly square later. You don't have to, if you're really good, you don't need a ruler, that's fine too. Um, I like to use it uh, on all my bends simply because then I know that they'll all be square. So you can go ahead and score all of your pieces. I like to score first and cut last because sometimes it's hard to see the dashed lines uh, inside of the wall pieces. When it gets dark and stuff you might have a hard time seeing it. So if you haven't scored it uh, and a lot of times, if you're not sure you scored something, you can take your knife and drag to it and it'll catch on that paper. So you'll know you've already scored that. Uh, I've also, at times, if I've got a really complicated piece, I'll take a marker and put a dot on the line that I've already scored so I know that I don't go back and score it again and maybe uh, take the risk of actually cutting all the way through the cardstock. Um, now we're going to go ahead and cut this piece out. 
I like to just uh, sometimes I'll save the uh, scrap card stock sometimes I just pitch it in the trash can I like to keep one handy it keeps my uh, my desk very clean while I'm working um, a lot of times I may or may not use uh, a ruler uh, when I'm cutting something uh, especially when it's tabs which I'm gonna freehand the tabs I'm just gonna cut the pieces that are actually I want to make sure are square uh, now the tabs I'm actually just gonna freehand the tabs because they are gonna be inside the model and if you cut a little a little too much off it's not a big deal plus uh, it speeds things up quite a bit by freehanding tabs that's just me personally if you feel like you need to use the uh, the ruler then by all means use the ruler it's not a big deal it's more personal preference than anything um, once you get into it and you find what works for you stick with it um, I know a lot of people that like to take and use the uh, save the extra card stuff to uh, smear glue with uh, I will do that from time to time um, all right now there is the uh, four inch wall cut out um, and I won't mention I have to mention this uh, you need to be really really careful with these razor knives um, if you intend on letting your kids do it, uh, which uh, my oldest son builds this stuff uh, and he has no problems with it, um, but you need to be extra, extra careful with these razor knives because they have no mercy. Um, you can cut yourself and not even know it. Um, they are very, very sharp, so please, please use extreme caution when using these. All right, uh, what I like to do after this is I'll take and bend all my pieces that I scored and you'll see how the pieces get the little edging there they will fold over quite easily now and they'll be exactly straight line this happens to be the bottom of the wall I'll make sure that you fold everything over and kinda get it into shape a lot of times I will take and actually and I'm gonna do it here right now uh, once I bend it over like this I will take my marker and go ahead and edge my wall when it's bent like that because sometimes you don't get all the way down in there when you come back up like this and plus it keeps it from um, spreading through but you can see the difference there between that side let me fold this one and this side you can see how this one's got some white that one's just got the gray okay so I'm gonna go ahead and do this one as well And if you slip off, that's the reason I like it uh, to kind of match the color to whatever the piece is that I'm using. Um, if you slip off, make a little mark on it, it's not a big deal. Um, okay, we're going to fold all, make sure we got all our pieces creased. Oop, almost forgot to do these pieces right here on the sides. Fold this one in. That's the reason I like to uh, kind of make sure on these these simpler pieces which um, uh, like the walls and stuff um, it's not a big deal if you miss uh, a score you can lay it back down and score it um, sometimes on some of the bigger pieces that are more complex uh, there's there's you know there's a lot of scoring to be done and you can actually you know get in there and you've you know uh, missed a bend or something and you've already started gluing um, it can cause you some problems uh, I'm speaking from experience here so go ahead and kind of mark these up um, and you don't necessarily have to even use the marker to cover the piece up there's some pieces that I do uh, actually use the marker on and there's some pieces that uh, I don't you know it's personal preference if you you know if the color of the piece is really light like some of these city buildings um, the concrete pattern is so light that you know I don't necessarily even have to use it so I don't because you never see it now you can I always like to test fold everything and kind of fit it together so that you can see what it's going to look like when you get done when you glue it um, now what I like to do is get my glue out over here 
I will glue one side first. And you have to be careful with your glue sometimes not to get too much. Um, I like the scotch glue. Uh, I have to thank Tom Tullis uh, at Fat Dragon Games for recommending this. This is some awesome stuff. Um, it dries pretty quick um, as well. Oop, didn't mean to do the bottom there, but that's all right. It dries really quick, and I'm going to go ahead and put some on this other side as well, just so that it can be tacking up and get good and tacky. See, now here's where a lot of people like to use a piece of cardstock to kind of spread the glue so they make sure they get it all the way up against the edge. Um, you can do that if you would like. It's a personal preference. Um, I'll do it on some things, just depending on the, the piece. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and start folding. I'm going to fold that piece over and press it. And if you, I don't know if you can see it or not, uh, some of the glue did press through. But once you press it a couple of times, it should tack in pretty good. And I'm going to come over here, press the other side. And see, that's why I keep this. When I press it like that, I'll take and just wipe the edge of the glue off there. Press it good. And it should be pretty good and tacked up there. Okay, fold it on in. Make sure my flaps are on the inside. Here is where your little sticks can come in handy. Uh, if you don't have a, if your ruler is too thick, which most of them will be for this, you can take that little stick, put it up in there, and apply some pressure to it to make your glue. And you can even lay it flat down and press down like this to get it uh, get it in there. Okay. Try to turn this one around this way so you can see it. Take your thing, line it up, and you can press it down in there. Just like that. Very simple. Okay, now, uh, a lot of times with this new glue, you can just wait just a few seconds and it will be, uh, you know, you got just a minute or so to work with it before it'll start tearing the paper when you try to peel it off. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and put the bottom piece on here. Just more glue back on this side. I always like to add a little extra on the piece that I'm folding in because sometimes you can't get to it to uh, press it up against something. So if you've got a little extra glue on there, it will expand itself and fit up against it. This is always, always kind of like folding a box together. Of course, uh, the, when you're folding a box together, it's not usually wet with glue. Um, I kind of turn this around where you can see, and I just kind of push the pieces in. See that one got on the outside, but I'm not concerned. I'll just fold that one in. This is this is probably the most difficult part you will find is just making sure you get all your box edges in. Once you get them in, see I got glue on my fingers. Try and keep from getting the glue all over the model. Um, once you get it in, if you push it in too far, you can take your X-Acto knife and kind of use it like a pry pry your piece back up to where it's level with the edge, which is what you really want because you don't want it too far in because then you won't be able to glue it to your base, which I'm going to cut and show you here in just a minute. So you pull that back up. you got just a few minutes or so to pull that back up and kind of push on it and get your piece in there. Alright, I always put the cap back on my razor knife. I've made that mistake before as well of not putting the top on it. All right, and there is your first four-inch dungeon wall.